Chef Jim Belaya, your host for Math and Science Gumbo. Now, in this series, we'll explore food inside and out, upside down and sideways. Weights, measures, cooking time and temps, physical and chemical change, I mean, you name it, the kitchen mathematician will beat, mix, blanch, toast, boil, and fricassee food to explore the math and science that goes into cooking. And every good recipe starts with good ingredients, and that's why we're starting at the grocery store. Now, when you shop for groceries, you have to know what you're buying and how much you're really paying for it. Now, that includes all the hidden costs of grocery shopping. So, we're going to learn about unit pricing, estimation and computation, the right tools, economics, multiples, and purchasing with cash or credit. Okay, is it more economical to buy the small can of beans or the large can of beans? Now, to help you decide, look closely at the unit price and do a quick calculation. Now, sometimes it pays to buy in bulk. Other times, it doesn't. I mean, how many 55-gallon drums of mayo do you need? It all depends on how much you need for the recipe or the shelf life of the ingredients. Now, for many items, grocery stores do unit pricing. You know, that's where the stores show the price by ounce or pound. Now, even though the unit price of the 55-ounce version is cheaper than the 8-ounce one, if you only need eight ounces of an ingredient and don't have plans for the leftover, then buy the eight ounces instead of the 55. Now, another way to save money is to buy store brands. Most of them taste just as good as the national brands but aren't advertised. So they cost you less. With the national brands, you pay for the pleasure of watching all those clever TV commercials. <laughs> Twenty-two. Here. Yeah, I need uh, two five-pound bricks of mozzarella cheese for the pizzas I'm going to cook later. How much is that a pound? Three forty-nine per pound. It's on special today. Let's see. I have thirty bucks to spend on mozzarella. Do I have enough for two bricks? Nope. I don't even have enough for nine pounds. But I have enough for eight pounds, so I estimate I have enough to buy between eight and nine pounds a day. I guess I'll be baking low cheese pizzas. Uh, let me have eight and a half pounds, please. Sounds great. There's nothing like fresh popcorn, especially how great it smells. Well, how much does popcorn cost per batch? Well, it depends on microwave versus old-fashioned pop-on-the-stove popcorn. Now, microwave popcorn is convenient and tasty. But is it any more convenient, tasty, or inexpensive than popcorn you make on the stove? Let's see. Again, let's look at the unit pricing. Now, you get three ounce servings in a package of microwave popcorn, but you get 27 ounces out of this jar. The microwave popcorn costs $4.29, but the jar costs $3.29. Yikes! That's a difference of 11 cents per serving. It's almost as expensive as buying popcorn at the movies. <laughs> then again, you don't have to sit through a Tom Cruise movie. But remember, fancy packaging and convenience can drive up your grocery bill. So be sure to grab the right tool for your budget. Not long ago, grocery cashiers keyed in every price by hand. Today, they almost all use scanners. Every item in the store is tagged with a uniform price code or UPC, which tells the scanning computer what's being purchased at the register. This method helps the grocery store keep track of what's being sold, so they know what to put on the grocery shelves. Every time an item is scanned, the computer helps the store decide how much more to buy to keep up with customer demand. It's all inventory control, having the right items on the shelves that they know their customers want to buy. Any coupons today? Oh, are you kidding me? I'm the kitchen mathematician. I'm always looking for a bargain. Do, 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 do. <laughs> there you go. Coupons are a great way to lower your grocery store bill. Sometimes they even have run specials that double or triple the value of your coupons, saving you even more money. So, uh, what does a chicken use to save money? <laughs> a coupon. <laughs> Coupon, that one, I'll tell you, it always kills them. 
your money. total is forty-two fifty. You save fourteen dollars with your coupons. <laughs> all right, good. Forty-two fifty. All right. Well, now today you have many different ways to pay for your grocery bills: cash, check, debit card, or credit card. What's the best way for you to pay? Well. Cash is the least expensive way to pay. You don't have to pay any interest or extra fees to use cash. You can pay by check, but see, some banks charge a fee for every check you write. Eh, there's your debit card. That works just like cash. You see, the bank takes money directly from your checking account and gives it to the grocery store. Most of the time, there aren't any fees, but some banks may charge you a small one on your purchases. And now, many grocery stores are using credit cards. Now these can be convenient but expensive if you don't pay off your balance every month. Credit card companies are charging you interest to use their money. Thanks for your help. Can you meet me out front with the buggy? Sure, pull on up. Thanks. You know, a successful trip to the grocery store is one where you head for the kitchen with everything you need at a price you can afford. Paying attention to the unit price, packaging, and the ability to estimate and compute the actual cost of groceries is the important first step in the cooking process. I'm Chef Jim Belaya.